What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys can be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about visibility underwater. I'm gonna show you a couple examples of how we measure visibility. I'm gonna show you where the scuba industry actually gets it wrong. And then I'm gonna talk about the green blue scenario everybody thinks green and blue water is always going to be crystal clear and it's it's going to be the prettiest water out there and sometimes that's the furthest thing from the truth our lake right now we've got about 10 foot of visibility which is phenomenal for lake hickory it's going to be a really good day to go out and dive but i'm going to show you several different clips today of green and blue water and some ponds that have been dyed green and blue to make them look really really pretty from the surface yet when you drop below the surface they get pretty dark pretty quick. So whether you're used to diving your fresh quarries where you can see maybe 20, 30 feet, or you love the warm tropical waters uh, where you can see 100, 200 feet, or maybe you're even a cavern or a cave diver where it's really dark, but it's super crystal clear down in the Florida Springs or even the sea notes down in Mexico, visibility for a diver is typically measured horizontally. However, if you dive local environments like we dive here, you can see the visibility is really not that great. And typically when we think about what visibility is, we measure it once again in a horizontal axis. The real way to measure visibility, or more accurately to speak, the clarity of water should actually be measured vertically. And I'm going to show you a device called a Seiki disc and how it's actually used to measure water clarity or water visibility. A Seiki disc is a device that is basically a black and white circular disc that is attached to a rope that has predetermined measurements already on it. And basically it is lowered down into the water column and just till the point where it can no longer be seen. Once you've reached that point, you're going to slowly retrieve the disc up just to the point where you can actually see it. And you're going to measure the distance underwater of what you can actually see based off how much rope is let out. This is called the Seiki depth. And you can measure this in feet or meters. And it's also going to tell you the clarity of the water or, in short, the visibility of the water as well. So here in our local lake, we can take that exact same principle of the Seiki disc and we can actually determine visibility. I know at the bottom of the stairs there, the water is probably about six inches deep. So obviously I've got about six inches of visibility. I know here where I'm standing, the water is about three foot deep. So I can tell that we have basically three foot of visibility. If we walk on over to the edge of the dock here, the water's gonna get slightly deeper. And I can see that we're in about five foot of visibility because we're in five foot of water and I can still see the bottom. I can walk on over and I can see that we're in about seven foot of visibility right now because now we're in about seven foot of visibility. And if I come all the way over to the edge, and I'm not sure if the shadow is really going to let you see it or not, but I can just barely see the bottom there. So I know that we have about 10 foot of viz. Now, just to verify that, if I step on over, I can see now that we're in about 12 foot of viz or 12 foot of depth, and I can't see the bottom. So somewhere between 10 and 12 foot is gonna be the current visibility of our lake. Now, there are several other factors here. As you can see out in front of me, it's solid bedrock. That's all that's out there. It's a very dense, hard bottom. As we go on out in the lake where our training grounds are, way out there, then of course it's gonna have a lot of seal and mud coverage, and that's where a lot of that turbidity is gonna come up. That turbidity is what's gonna really change our visibility, whether we stir it up by kicking our fins or we just start up by having boats out here. As wave movements and things go through the water, then of course it's gonna start up that visibility. But this is a great general idea of how we measure visibility in water the correct way. Now I just mentioned turbidity. What exactly is turbidity? Well, turbidity can be any suspended particle in the water column, whether it's just dirt and silt and mud that's been stirred up by a diver or even just rain runoff in your local environment. Anything that's inside the water column that's going to deflect the light from penetrating through the water is considered turbidity. And depending on how much turbidity you have, that's what's really going to determine how far you can actually see in the water. Now, if the turbidity is extremely high, like what we have here in our local lake, then even flashlights in general are not typically going to help you, especially if you've got a very powerful light. That flashlight in itself is going to be reflected back at you because of all the turbidity in the water. Now, if you have a very low light, and this is another reason we prefer lower lumen lights, typically anything 1,000, say 800 to 1,000 lumen light in our local environment tends to be the right amount. Now, your light beam angle is going to really determine how much you can see as well. 
but typically your lower lumen lights work very well in turbid waters. Now, when we deal with waters that's been dyed, say here in this local uh, quarry that we're diving to do work at, you'll see just how green and blue the quarry is. However, as we get down deeper, you'll notice just how dark it is and how much turbidity is actually in the water. Because of the dye that's been put in there to make it look beautiful here at the surface, it actually eliminates any type of penetration of light and that's why it's so dark. Plus, our visibility is not quite as great and we can't see as far horizontally because of the turbidity of the dye itself. So even though the water is blue and green, we're still not going to have the visibility that you think you would have just because of what the surface looks like. So once again, how do we measure visibility? Well, in all honesty, we should be calling it clarity, not visibility. And we're never going to measure horizontally. And for some reason, that's just what the scuba industry does. Whether we're trying to measure a shipwreck and how much of that shipwreck we can see at a time, we should really think about the clarity being measured vertically from the surface down, not necessarily how far we can focus horizontally in the water column. And a good, accurate measurement of what the clarity should be like should be measured with a Seiki disc or simply what we can see from the surface as well. So there you go, guys. How clear is your water? What is good visibility to you? Is it 5 foot, 10 foot? It's typically what it is for us here in the lake. Uh, or is it 100 to 200 foot like you'd see out in the oceans or a spring or somewhere like that? Don't always judge a book box cover just like you don't want to judge visibility simply by what you see on the surface. Sometimes getting underwater and just seeing what you can see is the best way to measure visibility. Remember, the scuba industry always says it's how far we can see horizontally when technically it's how far we can see vertically in the water column. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys... We appreciate your business.